What is a transfer? Hmm? If I transfer one player from one team to another team, what does that mean? Change the player. Yes, we give the player to the other team. Okay. So when we're talking about fiscal transfers, we're talking about really transferring money, transferring taxes, right? <coughs> So in the US every year, here we have New York, and here we have on the East Coast, New York has a big financial industry, and down here we have New Mexico, which is near the border with Mexico. Okay? Which state is more wealthy, New York or New Mexico? New York. New York has more money, right? New Mexico unemployment is 10% or higher. Right? They don't have much industry. New York has Financial industry, right? Wall Street, yeah. collect a lot of tax. Okay? So, do you think they send the money from New York to New Mexico or not? They do. Every year, New York has sent billions of dollars over the years to other states in the US. Is that fair to New York? Or not fair? If you were in New York, would you like to make your own country? You don't have to send money to anybody else? Hmm? Just keep all the money for yourself? No. Why not? New York is the city you see. Huh? New York is the one of the city you see. So what? We can make our own country. Call our country New York. We don't have to give money to anybody else. Like Seoul. You live in Seoul and Gyeonggi-do. How about Seoul and Gyeonggi-do just makes one country? Forget about everybody else. Keep all the money, you'll be richer. Why not? Many spend in military service and other government service. So you need common defense, common defense, right? Or common service, government service, like defense, right? Any other reason? If you pull your money, you can make a defense. Anything else? Security. Maybe your grandmother is, is living in Gangwon Do. Where is your grandmother living? Where is your grandmother living? Far away, not in Gyeonggi Do and Seoul? Yes. So if you cut off Gyeonggi Do and Seoul, you're not going to pay, your taxes is not getting paid for your grandmother. Do you understand? It can be similar in the US. Maybe their grandmother retired or their grandmother is from New Mexico. So do they mind paying taxes? Do you mind paying tax for your grandmother? Or you want to keep the money for yourself? Don't care about your grandmother. Okay, but what about in Europe? In Europe here we have Germany. And here we have Greece. Right? Same as New Mexico and New York, right? Or the UK, let's say the UK even clearer financial industry in London, right? UK gets a lot of money. Should the UK send the taxes to Greece? Hmm? No, why not? Different country. Different country, so what? Hmm? We're all a global citizen. <laughs> no, you don't think so? That's the problem in Europe, right? That's the problem with the European crisis. Problem. They don't want to send money to Greece. They, they're okay to send the money to New Mexico because maybe it's their relation and they're the same country. They feel solidarity, right? Do you understand solidarity? In Korea, you don't mind sending the money to the countryside, right? They're your relations or that kind of thing. You know somebody's relations. But in the UK, they're not, people hasn't moved. Maybe there's a language and cultural barrier. They don't want to pay. And then here they have different rules, right? Greece, they can retire earlier than the UK. So they make a joke, like, why would the UK people pay for the Greek people to retire early and lie on the beach? I'm working up here in the rain, this kind of weather, right? Outside, digging holes in the ground, getting wet. Greek guy is 56, wearing his sunglasses, lying on his thing, drinking the cocktail. Right, is that fair? No. So they don't want to do that, right? But uh, we should have that if we have a currency union. Why? Why do we need fiscal transfer if we have a currency union? It's easy to move money to 
It's easy to move. What? Labor. We're talking about everything we're talking about the asymmetric shock. So if there's an asymmetric shock, what happens? If New Mexico has a bad time, what happens? New York helps. New York helps them to get past the bad time. In New Mexico, a lot of their income is from payments from other states. Maybe 40% of the money coming into New Mexico is payments from other states. Right? What's that going on? It's going on pensions. Do you understand pensions? Yes. It's going on social security, people who don't have any jobs, 10% unemployed. Okay? It's going on defense. Maybe the US government will decide to make a, a big army barracks here, military, right? So all of these people spend this money in the community, in the hairdresser, in the restaurants, okay? And the economy improves if there's an asymmetric shock. Okay, but if we don't have this case, like in Europe, we're not helping them, right? The only thing we do is try to find another way, give them a loan, but they have to pay back the loan. Fiscal transfer, do they have to pay back? No. Does the people in, in the countryside in Korea have to pay back the money they get from Seoul? No. No, they don't. Okay? So, countries that agree to compensate each other for adverse shocks can form the optimum currency area. Do you understand compensate? Help or give the money, right? Assume country A is hit by an asymmetric demand shock. Greece has a problem. Country B, the UK, agrees to help country A by fiscal transfers, by sending them money to pay the pensions and so on. Okay? Then the shock will be smaller <coughs> because of increased government spending. Okay. So do you understand the fiscal transfers? Yes. Next one is homogeneous preferences. Homo, do you understand? Homo means the same, right? So homogeneity of preferences are countries that share a wide consensus on the way to deal with shocks should form an OCA. So people have different ideas about how to deal with shocks. Okay, we saw we have two main groups. We have the German economists and the Austrian economists on the supply side. Okay, maybe Sweden. And then on the other hand, we have the US economists, which is more like Ireland and the UK would more agree with the US economists about what to do. Okay? So obviously, if we can agree about what to do, then we're better off. But if we don't agree, it's not going to be easy, right? So the main player in this is the ECB. And the governments. Do you understand the ECB? Yes. ECB makes the monetary policy for Europe. Okay? In the US, who makes the monetary policy? FOMC. Fed, the Federal Reserve, the central bank. Okay? They make the monetary policy in the US. EU, ECB. Okay? Then the EU has the different governments, countries. In the US, we have states. Okay? And the federal government. The government in the US. And they decide the fiscal policy. U U EU has no central organization for deciding the fiscal policy, right? Just the countries decide the fiscal policy. We have a so-called fiscal contract. Fiscal contract means that you're not allowed to spend too much money. The government is not allowed to spend too much money, right? So the countries made some fiscal compact here, which meant that we can't have a big deficit. Okay, so for example, our deficit should be just less than 1%. Do you understand deficit? What does a fiscal deficit mean, or government deficit mean? Spending more than you get, right? So we made an agreement in, in uh, Europe. We are not going to spend more than we get, more than 1%. Okay, government has to balance, also called like balance budget. Do you understand balance budget? So some American economists said, that's crazy. Paul Krugman said, that's crazy. Why would you do that? It's like wearing a straitjacket. Do you understand straitjacket? If you go, if you're crazy, they might put on the straitjacket. You can't move your arms, right? He said, it's like the straitjacket. Countries, if they have a crisis, Paul Krugman is a demand-side economist. He thinks the government needs to spend a lot of money. But we made this agreement, so we can't, OK? But in this agreement, they have a little bit of flexibility. If there's a crisis, maybe you can, the government can spend more money. Right? 
So here we have uh, in Europe and in the US. So in the US it's quite easy. Everybody agrees about what to do. If there's a shock, right? Most of the, it depends on the governments, but most of the people agree here on their on the demand side. So they do the monetary policy stimulus, low interest rate, printing QE, okay, fiscal policy stimulus. Now the Democratic Party is more stimulus than the Republican Party, right? In the US. But currently we have the Democratic Party. So they have stimulus. Do you understand stimulus? Demand side. But in Europe, we can't really agree. There's two different ideas, right? There's the Germans. Who want austerity? They think the best way to, to deal with the crisis is austerity. Not just Germany, Finland, Sweden, Denmark, Netherlands, okay? But then there's other countries who agree with the Americans, right? Like Ireland, the UK, and maybe Greece. And they think when we have a crisis, we need to have an easy monetary policy, and we need to, governments need to spend a lot of money. Okay? Who won the argument in Europe? Who do you think won the argument? These countries who like austerity and not spending money? Or the periphery countries? Who won the argument? The central countries. In Europe we have the central countries here and then we have peripheral countries on the outside. Okay? So central countries France, Germany, Finland, okay? Periphery countries Greece, Italy, Portugal, Ireland. Okay? So they in Europe we have this problem. They have a different idea than some, some of these countries. Okay? So we should have we should have the same idea really together as a country about what to do if we have a shock. Okay, the consensus is important for the survival of the currency union because otherwise we'll be fighting, blaming each other. Okay? So Greece blames Germany. You made the wrong idea. You said austerity. Okay? Do you understand austerity? Austerity cutting the spending, cutting government spending, right? Firing the workers. But that didn't work. Right? Is the relationship okay now? Oh, a little bit of problem in the relationship. Okay, next one. Solidarity against nationalism. Chinese students, what's the best country in the world? <laughs> China, Russian students, what's the best country in the world? Hmm? Russian students, what's the best country in the world? <laughs> Don't know. Don't know. Korean students, what's the best country in the world? America. America, USA? Do you agree? You're wearing a hat with the USA. Right? In Ireland, we don't think we're the best country in the world, right? But when I went to China, there's a lot of ads on the TV. So, beautiful China. China's the best. Okay, when I went to the United States, it was the same. They have ads on the TV. I was quite surprised. Why do they have ads on the TV saying they're the best country in the world, right? If you watch AFN in Korea, you'll see that kind of thing. Do you ever watch AFN? No. no. Usually there was some ad and the father told the child, it's because we live in the best country in the world, in the advertisement, right? Do you believe that? <laughs> You're surprised? We shouldn't really say we're the best country in the world, right? I think. Probably there's only a couple of countries like Norway and Sweden, they get the highest scores for education, for healthcare, right? For low corruption, for unemplo low unemployment, right? For good legal system, fair legal system. So perhaps Norway or Sweden could say they're the best country in the world, right? Sorry, China. <laughs> also the US, right? One of the candidates for the American election, Bernie Sanders, he says that US is not the best country in the world. Do you think he'll get elected as president in the US? <laughs> he says they're not the best country. He says Norway is the best country. He wants the US to be more like Norway. Okay? So, uh, are you going to move to Norway now? Look for a Norwegian president? <coughs> no? But the weather is bad in Norway. So it's hard to see. It depends on what you think is good about the best country in the world, right? But anyway, some countries are quite 
have solidarity, they like each other, and they feel the same, they can form the same currency union, right? So, uh, we're going to have a shock. We know that in the future, we can predict. We're going to have a shock. So how are we going to re react? Are we just going to worry about ourselves and our own country? Maybe the UK a little bit worry about themselves, right? Not that much about other countries. Or are we going to have some solidarity helping the other countries? Right? Are you a global citizen or a Korean citizen? You're Korean? China has a problem, what are you going to do? Don't care? They're not Korean? Okay. <laughs> what are you going to do if they have a problem in China? Doesn't matter? Yes, doesn't matter what? <laughs> They're not Korean. What about China? Korea, Koreans have some problem. Doesn't matter. We're going to have them. Okay. So we can look at the country and we can see about their culture. Do they have a high degree of nationalism or not in their country? I think Korea has quite a high degree of nationalism. Okay. Are Koreans better than everybody else? Superior race? No. Do you know Hitler? Yeah. He thought that the Germans were a superior race, so he wanted to kill all the Russians. <laughs> he thought they were not as superior like the Germans, they're superior. Do you think the same way? You're superior? Koreans are superior to other people? No? So we had some people like that in the history. A little bit crazy, right? They thought their race is superior to the other race. Okay? But in fact, they're not superior. If you t The human brain hasn't changed that much. Uh, about, let's say if you took somebody from 20,000 years ago or 30,000 years ago and you gave them the education, the same education that people get today, they would be just as smart as us, as us, right? So if we give the people the access to education, it's not the case that one race is superior to another race, right? That doesn't make sense according to the science, okay? So anyway, you guys are studying global business, so you, have, you should try to have global mindset. Right? Repeat after me. I am a global citizen. <laughs> it doesn't matter about what country people are from. <laughs> They're all the same. <laughs> okay, very good. Okay? So you learned you learned that, right? Graduates. Right? Do you believe that though? You have to start to believe that, right? So uh, again, if we have nationalism, a lot of nationalism, it's not a good idea to be in the currency area. Okay, could that be a problem in Asia, making a currency area in Asia? Between Korea and Japan? Hmm? Japan and China? Hmm? Right, so if the people in can make a better relationship and more solidarity between countries, Korea and Japan hosted the World Cup together, right? That helped the solidarity between Korea and Japan. So then the question is, is Europe an optimal currency area? So we're going to look at these things, but we can't get a black and white answer, okay? Do you understand black and white answer? Yes. So mostly some criteria is fulfilled and some are not. It's not always clear, okay? It's hard to quantify how important is each criteria, okay? So it's not easy to do that. So the first one is asymmetric shocks. How frequent are asymmetric shocks in Europe? Okay. So we can assume past shocks can be used as a guide to future shocks. So we're looking at the history. Okay. We can use the exchange rate movement against the Deutsche Mark as an indicator. In the past, Germany used the Deutsche Mark. Usually, countries use their exchange rate to offset the shocks. And the Deutsche Mark was the most stable currency in Europe. So we can see that there is a variant, variancy uh, across countries, okay? So here we can see this index is based on the exchange rate volatility against the Deutsche Mark from 1989 to 1998, okay? And then uh, the new EU member states from 1999 to 2004. So volatility, we can see that some countries had more, do you understand volatility? Changing. So these countries had a high, higher volatility, right? And then this country, maybe Austria very close to Germany, 
Belgium, Ireland, Netherlands, Switzerland, very close to Germany, right? Didn't have much uh, difference in their exchange rate compared to Germany, or much changes, but these other countries did change their exchange rates. So it means that there was some cases of asymmetric shock, but it depends on the country. That's the point, right? Uh, it depends which country you're in, you can have more uh, shocks. Okay. So here we can see when we had a world shock, like global financial crisis, okay, there was an asymmetric response. Some countries were affected more than other countries. So Greece was the worst affected, Italy, right? GDP going down, okay? Spain, Portugal, Ireland, okay? Some countries like Luxembourg not badly affected. So we can see there is a difference. It's not the same. If there's a shock, countries, some countries get more damage than other countries. Okay. Uh, the prices also different across the prices. <coughs> so, uh, what do you think about Europe? Is this a concern or not a concern? Asymmetric shock. Concern or not a concern? Concern, concern right? It's a concern. We can see that the shock in the past has not been equal. Countries, some countries have had bigger shocks than other countries, and recently the same. Some countries have affected more than other countries, right? Maybe just one thing if we think of it an easy way. If the economy is going bad, what's one of the first things people cut their spending on? Right, for example, in Europe, they usually go on holidays in the summertime to Italy or Greece, right? But what, if we are having a hard time, one of the first things we're going to do is cut our holiday. We'll just stay in our own country. We're not going to go to Italy or Portugal or Greece this year, okay? So the country dependent on tourism can suffer more. Just one example, right? Explaining why we can have some countries can be affected more in the crisis. Okay, next one is openness. So how do we measure openness? Usually, we use trade as a percentage of GDP. So that Ireland and Korea are quite open based on this, right? We measure how much are we trading, imports and exports, compared to our total goods and services. So clearly, the smaller country is going to have a bigger uh, percentage, right? Uh, we can also use ratio of exports to GDP, imports to GDP. Here we take the average of the two. So most countries are very open. Okay, so if we look at the table, uh, we can see that uh, Luxembourg, a very small country, has a very high number, right? Uh, <coughs> But most countries have a high number. Trade is up to 50% of their GDP. Ireland also 72%. Okay? Germany is slightly lower because it's a big country. So they trade inside their country more. Okay? If we look at the US and Japan, then they're big countries. They're a lot of their inside their own country. They're trading inside their own country rather than with other countries. Okay? So. Uh, how do the prices respond to exchange rate movements? So if there's a one-to-one -one pass through, exchange rate is useless for competitiveness. Generally, open countries have a high pass through. Do you understand pass through? So we're talking about exchange rate pass through. So it means if the prices change, okay, uh, does it go through to the exchange rate or not? Okay. So let's say that uh, in my country, let's say that the pasta in it pasta cost ten dollars. Let's just say, and then in in the U.S. Okay, and then it's being sold in Europe. Okay. And then in Europe, the exchange rate is one to one. 
So it's also been sold for 10 euros in, the, in Europe. Okay, but if the price of the past pasta changes to $15, okay, then uh, is this reflected in the exchange rate? Does the exchange rate change to make this still at 10 euros, right? So $15 to be 10 euros is going to be, let's say $1 is going to be point, change to 0.7, right? Something like that, okay? So does the, the prices change? Does the exchange rate change so that the price stays the same in the other country? So in the US, the exchange rate doesn't change to reflect the price change true. Japan it does, okay? Uh, so this is just another measure of the openness. If your exchange rate changes like this to reflect the changing prices, your economy is more open, okay? So we can see that uh, here, most of the European countries, yes, they're up around 0.7 or 0.8. Their exchange rate is flexible to the prices. So they're quite, the point is here that Countries are quite open in Europe, open to other countries. So, next one is diversification and similarity. So, diversification is generally high in Europe, with some exceptions. Okay? So, most countries in Europe have diversified economy. We gave Iceland too dependent on finance, Ireland maybe too dependent on finance. Okay? Uh, UK too dependent on finance, but most of the countries is well diversified. So we look at the trade similarity. How dissimilar is trade in agriculture, minerals, and manufacturing of our country to the eurozone average? Okay. So if we look at this uh, trade dissimilarity index, okay. So if we have a high number, we are quite dissimilar. So we can see again last year here, it's quite different from the other European countries, the structure of its economy, right? Products it's making. So we also saw that Latvia suffered more when there was a shock. Okay. Uh, these countries very close to the average. These countries further away from the average. So we can see Ireland here further away, Netherlands, Denmark. So it depends on the country, but generally, uh, most European countries are having a trade structure which is close to the average uh, trade structure. Okay. Labor mobility. Labor mobility is hard to measure. It depends on a lot of things. Moving cost, risk of becoming unemployed, my long run career, do I think it's if I go to Germany, maybe I can come back to Greece and get a job again. Family prospects, okay, maybe I think I can get married in Greece, but I won't find a wife in Germany, right? Eligibility for welfare, if I go to Germany, will I, if I don't have a job, can I get the social security payment? Language differences, okay? So what we are going to do is compare the EU to already well-functioning areas like the USA and Canada. And what we can see is what we would expect. The cross-country labor mobility in the EU is low. Okay, so even within countries, mobility is low in the EU. Outside immigration is also not uh, good, right? So the, we are going to look at foreign-born population as a percentage of the total population. Okay. So total foreign-born people in Canada is nearly 20%, okay? Canada, it's, it's a lot easier to get a visa. Of the English-speaking countries, maybe Canada is the easiest one to get a visa. If you have a specific profession or qualification in a profession, like for example, accountancy, right? Or even sometimes high school teacher, you can apply for the visa in Canada and they'll give you the lifetime visa, okay? A lot of Indian people go to Canada, right? That kind of way. Uh, the USA is getting stricter these days. In Europe, uh, Austria is lower. Right? Less foreign-born people are living in these countries. Okay? 
Uh, so, other EU nationals who are move, living in these countries is also very low. Okay? So, Japan we can see is the lowest one, right? Maybe Korea is also going to be quite low too. Not many foreign born people living there. Uh, so, within country labor mobility, <coughs> do people in Europe, even in their own country, do they move around? In the US, they move around a lot, right? If you watch the US sitcom, like Friends or something like that, right? You can see their friends or other people are always moving from LA to New York or some other place for a job, okay? It's quite easy to move around in the US. UK, New Zealand, Japan. Okay, some countries in Italy, they like their mothers, maybe. Their mothers look after the boys. Boys stay at home until they're about 35 in Italy because their mother's cooking is very good. It makes pasta very well. They don't want to move away from mama. <laughs> right? They stay at home. Okay. Spain, Greece, they like to stay in their hometown. Don't move around much. Okay? What about in Korea? Do Korean people move around much to get a job in a different city? Not really. Yeah. Would you miss your mother if you moved to Busan? <laughs> hmm? yeah. Yes? What about in China? <laughs> Do people move around to different cities much? Get working? Sometimes, often in Russia? Not comparing to USA. Not comparing to the USA? Right. Uh, so, <coughs> we can see in Europe that the people don't move around too much. Uh, so, on the labor mobility, it's a failure, right? It's not working well. And we can see just the evidence from these days. Greece has an unemployment rate of 27%. Spain has an unemployment rate of 25%, right? But the Netherlands, Germany, they have unemployment rates of just 5%. So why don't the people from Greece and Spain move to Germany to work, to get a job? Okay? There are different reasons, right? They don't want to move away from home. They can't get a job which matches their skills. They don't speak the language. Okay? They feel lonely living in that country, maybe. So that is the economic criteria. Do you have any question about that? Okay, so discuss with your partner about the three economic criteria and the EU. So we have openness. Diversification and labor mobility. Okay, so those three things. So discuss about the EU as a currency area. Openness, diversification, and the last one, labor mobility. Okay, so discuss the situation in Europe. Are, is it positive thing for the currency area or negative thing for the currency area for each one?
can also say diversification and similarity, right? <coughs> similarity. So can anybody help her? Depends on the semester show. Hmm? Depends on the semester show. What's that semester show? Mm -hmm. Oh, asymmetric shocks? So we just we're asking are they are the countries well diversified or not? Are European countries well diversified? Are their economies well diversified? Or not well diversified? Most of them are well diversified, okay? Are they similar? Do the countries have similar industry in Europe or not similar? Generally. Similar, right? So they're well diversified and they have we saw that most countries are fairly similar. Okay? They're doing the same kind of trade, similar kind of trade, right? Then the last one, labor mobility. Trade uh, timing. <coughs> Is that positive or negative? Negative. negative. Why? Uh, it depends on uh, costs or factors. Like what? Like moving costs, risk of becoming unemployed. What, what do you think is an important one? Cost do you think is important? Does it cost that much to fly from Spain to Germany? Hmm? Don't know? It's not that expensive to travel from Spain to Germany. Maybe we have to pay some money for the first month's rent. If we move somewhere, we have to pay two months deposit, right? Up front to rent a place. That could be expensive, right? We have to buy new things for our house. Well, I think more than that, we're talking about language and culture in Europe, in Europe, right? Language and culture. Okay, makes it hard for the, the workers to move to another country. So then, let's take a break there for ten minutes. We'll talk about the political one after the break.